What's going on guys? So before I kick off this really cool project with the dump trailer, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my friend Kiefer over at All About Trailers. It's a YouTube channel. Basically they test, destroy, mess with, work with all different types of trailers and they're sponsored by Texas Pride Trailers. And I wanted to give him a shout out because he sent me a really cool new intro to my channel that blew me away. He's an awesome content producer and they're really trying to grow that channel. So head over to All About Trailers. I'll put a link in the description of this video so you know how to get there easily. And I hope you enjoy the new intro. Again, big shout out to All About Trailers and Kiefer who runs that channel. All right, guys, we have something cool in store for you. That was cool, kind of an echo with the sound. Anyways, you probably remembered we used my dump trailer out at the beach to remove trash and debris during the beach cleanup for 2020, basically this year's big shell beach cleanup. And during that specific cleanup event, we came across this really large container. It probably weighed about a ton and a half. And we wanted to load it in the back of the trailer. We ultimately didn't because the park rangers had told us it's probably not a good idea simply because of how awkward it was. And we had no real way of getting it back here without tilting this back and it was full of trash. And we would have, in essence, dumped this large container on top of that or risk dumping all the trash out to try to load it. So he said, you know what, they got a front end loader, they can bring it out there. Because we pulled it out of the ground, it made their job a little bit easier, which was nice. So it had me thinking, is there something I could have added to my dump trailer or had in my dump trailer that might have helped me in that type of scenario? So we're going to be installing a winch at the front of this trailer. And I'm gonna be using some parts that are designed for a different type of installation application, but I think they'll work out really well on here. So let's kick this video off and show you what we'll be putting on today. All right, guys. So what you are looking at in front of you is everything that'll be going on the trailer today. I have these clamps that I use for woodworking projects that I'm going to use to try to clamp that in place so I can take my measurements. But let's go over what we're looking at. First of all, big shout out to the folks at eTrailer.com. They are the official sponsor of my channel and they provided me all this equipment. And we got it all uniform. So it's all from Bulldog Winch. Bulldog Winch produces a 6,000 pound power sport winch with synthetic line. This is really cool. Plus, this is the Bulldog mount. This actually goes on a Kawasaki mule, and we're adapting it to work with my trailer. The reason why I specifically chose this one is because it has this angle to it. You can see it right here. And you can also see that this flat steel plate right here should work very well in terms of connecting it to the structure up front to make sure that I have the most framing and the most structure behind this to prevent any type of damage whenever winching. Also, I have the Bulldog Winch wireless remote, which is going to be really, really helpful. And I bought this set up here. So this is a booster cable set. It is, I believe it's two gauge cable. Yeah, two gauge cable, 20 feet of it. But check this out. It essentially has these two battery clips right here. Quick disconnect plug, another quick disconnect plug. So I can connect this portion right here to the winch. And whenever the trailer's down, I simply connect it to the battery power connection, 20 feet. This isn't gonna raise up 20 feet, so I have plenty of slack with this. And then when I'm done, I can simply curl it all up, throw it inside of the front toolbox, and I have my cables with me. Plus, it comes in this really nice case that houses it. That is very thick cable. And two gauge cable is more than enough for a 6,000 pound winch. So, this is the grade five hardware that comes with this plate. And this plate is a quarter inch thick, by the way. And this is what's used to mount it to the front of a Kawasaki mule. However, I am gonna be using much larger grade eight bolts. And I'm gonna be using four of them to mount it to the front structure of the dump trailer. Let me show you where we'll be putting it. Okay, so we will be mounting the plate on the opposite side of this. We're at the front of the dump trailer and we're gonna drill holes through these and we're gonna bolt that plate from the other side through this using washers and those grade eight fasteners to attach it to this structure. And this is all completely boxed steel attached to the flat steel right there. So that will be my structure, and that's specifically why I used that mount from a Kawasaki Mule. 
And something you may be concerned with, but you shouldn't be, is placing the winch up front. Is it going to make it more susceptible to things falling on it that might be dumped over the side? And it really won't because the tarping system I have comes off the front about 10 inches. And this is going to sit actually forward and beneath of it. So it will be mounted right here, whereas the tarping system is still going to protrude out significantly further than it. So the winch will be protected essentially by the tarping system. And I think that will work out really well. I absolutely have the space I need to run bolts, and I may be able to use the existing holes, but I might have to drill two new holes right here as well. And I brought those clamps out just so I can kind of hold it up against this whenever I'm drilling. And something I like about this mount is the fact that, again, it has a bit of an angle to it that's going to work out perfectly because that angle is almost exactly in line with the bottom point of the trailer. It's exactly where you want it to be. If I put holes right here on each side, I'll be able to go through those braces on the trailer pretty much dead on even. And the holes up top are pretty much already aligned to this top channel right here. So I think this is going to work out really well. And I plan on using two bolts up top, two bolts down below. That's going to be more than enough for the 6,000 pound winch. Again, I'm using grade 8 fasteners. I'm going through much thicker steel than what you would see on a Kawasaki. And... With the winch, I'll absolutely be able to know if I'm putting too much stress on it pretty quickly. And this is, again, quarter-inch thick steel plate. So all of this is Bulldog equipment, and it's all designed for each other. This is not a full-size winch, so th this isn't the type of winch I have on the front of my truck. This is designed for more of an ATV-type setup. But that's where we're going to put it. Okay, time to make my first hole. First hole all the way through. Let's take a look at the other side of it. There we go. Check that out. Pretty much perfectly lined up in the center. There we go. Just have to drill three more. Got these two and a half inch long bolts. That'll go all the way in. And on the other side, I'll be using a washer, lock washer, and a nut. So we're gonna go and tighten those off camera, then I'll be right back. Guys, when Texas Pride says that they use thick wall tubing, they ain't kidding. The tubing on this top beam is crazy thick. I mean, it's nearly a quarter inch thick. It is very, very thick tubing all the way around. And that's a big differentiation between the Texas Pride trailer and some of the other ones I looked at. Many of the other trailers simply used this side wall and they'd bend it up and wrap it around so it looked like it was this top rail. Okay, just quickly wanted to show you that bolts are in place. They are threaded right to the end. I'm gonna clean off some of that zinc coating whenever we're done. Stuff pretty much wipes off if it's on smooth paint. But, there we go. That is not going anywhere. So here is everything unboxed. This is all the wireless control stuff. This is the control that comes with the winch. Fair lead right here. This is a synthetic cable, so it's going to use this smooth style fair lead instead of a roller fair lead. These are all the mounting bolts for the winch itself, and it comes with quite a few because they also include this plate right here, and I assume that some of these would be to mount that plate, but I'm not going to need that plate because I have that already mounted up there. It comes with four cables. Two red, two black, and the short ones go from this control box to the winch body itself. This control box, in my case, is going to be mounted in the toolbox. 
and I'll have a set of long cables that go up to the winch itself, which will be these cables. And now these are two gauge cables, and these look like they're six gauge cables. Anyways, this winch is relatively compact, whereas the Warren winch on the front of my truck weighs about 120 pounds. This thing only weighs about 25 pounds. Very lightweight, and it's relatively compact. So overall width is probably about 14 inches. Diameter of it is probably a little over four inches. So it's definitely a compact winch, 6,000 pound rating. I think at the weakest, it's about 1,000 pounds, but that's essentially if you have the thing spun up with almost all of its cable. Anyways, guys, let's get this mounted in place and get all of our wire ran. There we go, we have the winch already in place. The cool thing about this is it doesn't have your traditional lever to release everything. So the way you actually release this and put this in free spool is this end cap right here. So you rotate this. If I wanna put this in free spool, I'd rotate it this way, and now the winch is in free spool, and then I lock it this way. That's a pretty cool design. And something else I like about this setup, again, is how it's protected. So you can see from the side, none of the winch is exposed. So if I'm loading the back up and I have a tractor working back here, the tarping system goes right up to the front and it protects the winch. So everything is nice and protected. Now, I'm not going to be loading this trailer up from a dirt perspective that high, simply because that would overload the trailer and I'd be carrying too much. From a brush, trees, stuff like that, I'm not too concerned about it. I mean, winch bodies are pretty tough. They're designed to kind of take a beating, and I don't think I'll have anything rammed up here with enough strength to really try to hurt this thing at all. Plus, the fair lead as well as the plate are going to act as a form of protection, plus the cross member here. And again, I really don't think I'm going to have anything that's pushed far enough up here that it would just impact that. If there's anything tall, it would really rest up against the front of the tarping system. But the main point of this is the fact that it's elevated about two and a half feet off of the deck and I can still have full access to the trailer, the dump body, without having to worry about damaging or messing up the winch. Now, with the winch, I have the ability to hook something up and pull it up the back. Again, 6,000 pound capacity is more than enough for what I would need to use this for. Let's say we have a large log or something like that that we have to get into the back. Now I can simply hook it up drag it up the back and I'm good to go. So that is a really practical application for having a winch on a dump trailer. And this entire setup, everything when it was said and done, you're probably talking about $600 roughly for everything. That's the plate, that's the cabling, that's the winch itself, that's the bolts, nuts, everything. About 600, maybe a little bit more, but not too bad especially, you know, considering what it adds in terms of flexibility to the trailer. And I think it looks fantastic. I mean, the overall look is great. Everything there, besides, of course, the nuts and bolts, is Bulldog. It's Bulldog winch, Bulldog mounting. The wiring is even going to be Bulldog. And, you know, everything in place, the wireless remote, also Bulldog. So you can get everything from one manufacturer. And I got all of this from eTrailer.com. So I'll put a link in the description if that's something you're interested in. But let's go ahead and get everything wired. What I also like about this from a wiring perspective is your wires to the winch go right here. So the wire itself is gonna go over the top here and I can feed it down so it doesn't interfere with anything. Shoot, I could even put some type of a, a mount or a lasso there to connect it to so I don't have to worry about it hanging down. And I will actually just run everything into the toolbox so I can store it in there when I'm not using it. Overall though, so far I'm very happy with this process. Now, something kind of interesting because the ground cable is a little bit further away from the power connection on the 
winch, I have a little bit of slack and it allows me to make this little loop right here. This loop will work really well whenever I put a hook here just to hang the assembly right there and not worry about it. I'll just have to come up with a way to fasten it. I'll probably use like a D-ring and then simply connect it with a bungee cord or something to that D-ring so it's completely out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna be mounting the control box right here and I have a nifty little tool to help me because there's no way I can reach a screwdriver in by itself or a power drill. So I have this DeWalt little right angle drill adapter and I'll be able to get this right here. So, now I just need to get the other end of the power connections and everything ran to this specific box. Okay, so, now that my hole is drilled, I have to take my plug, feed everything through here. Just like that. So next, all I need to do is connect my green and black wire. So they are already set for you, green to green. and black to black. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, the wiring of the remote was a little bit of a pain only because it's designed to have a plug that will plug and play into some bulldog winches, but this specific one you have to wire it and you have to cut off the harness that's on the end and wire these tiny little wires that use a thread shielding and that thread shielding is hard to work around. Got it all connected and it should work now. So I just need to put my ground connection on, power connection, everything else is ran. Now something that's kind of cool about how they built this toolbox is they already notched it out right here. And if I want, this wire fits perfectly into that notch and it's smoothed off so I don't have to worry about it cutting through the wire. So if it's raining outside and I don't want this exposed while I'm winching, I can simply close the lid down and it would cover up the connection. So that's really cool. Anyways, I am ready to begin here. All I need to do is get my cable from here, pull off the little water cap, plug it in. And now I should be able to control the winch. Okay, quick update on the wiring. And this is something that is a little confusing. Their wiring in here isn't exactly clear. Um, they tell you essentially to connect the remote terminal, which is this, to this black box with the wires that are here. And you have a green and black set. But then you have these two pigtails that kind of hang off the end that look like they're supposed to go together. In the diagram, it actually shows black connected to green right here. So I connected the two wires and the box only clicks and it was confusing as to why they'd want you to do that because you're essentially creating a loop and uh, I wouldn't have known why they did that. Well, I confirmed it because when these are connected and you try to initiate the winch, all you hear is the control box clicking on and off but no movement. The minute I disconnected those wires, all of a sudden, the winch is operating properly, both wirelessly and from the remote itself. Okay, so we have everything connected now. My remote should be working. Got to turn it on first by holding down this button until the light starts to flash. Very dim light. Let's see. All right, let's put this in free spool. it out. Let's go ahead and lock it. 
and I have the corded remote. Well, I guess I have it down there. But, who needs a corded remote when you have a cordless remote? Alright, so, I'm at the back, holding on. Let's see what happens. It's working. It's pulling good, too. Here we go. That is pretty cool. All wired up. Again, I need to put the rubber boots right here, which I'm going to do right now so I don't forget. And then we'll be wrapping up with this project. All right, so I got the rubber boots put on both the positive and the negative terminals on the winch itself. And this thing is really well mounted in here. You can see it's bolted up real well. I think it looks pretty dang good. And all in all, the project took me about three hours. A lot of it, believe it or not, is filming, moving cameras around, stuff like that. But for the most part, if you were gonna do this yourself, you could probably knock it out in two hours. It's, uh, it's not that difficult. It's just a little time consuming. Of course, drilling through stuff, running all your wires, knowing where you're gonna put things because it's gonna vary from trailer to trailer. Anyways, guys, I will put a link in the description of this video if this is a project you might be interested in doing. Like I said, the entire setup, everything, costs about 600 bucks, maybe a little bit more than that. And you can have a really nice 6,000 pound bulldog winch mounted on the front of your dump trailer. Something you're going to want to keep in mind, of course, is knowing what type of bracing you have right here, because that's really going to matter. The only other thing I have left to do, and I may not do it today, is to find a way to route the wiring and to store the wiring when I'm not using it. Basically to keep it from just hanging here or from possibly binding in anything. It's a pretty simple thing. I mean, I'll show you guys what I end up doing. It'll probably just be installing some type of a D-ring or a clip, like a carabiner maybe, something just to hold the wire up and out of the way so it doesn't interfere with any of the uh, operation of the dump trailer when I need to use it. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.